Welcome to Montevideo, where the pulse of the culture beats in vibrant Candorbe rhythms and the intimate embrace of tango. Here, the history isn't just remembered, it's lived in the cobblestone streets of the Suidad Vieja, echoing the tales of colonial pasts and revolutionary dreams. Uruguay's soulful capital is where stories unfold as sizzling edges of good asado grill revealing the flavors of rich and culinary heritage. Hey, what's up fam? You can catch the full video right here. You're here to get that film look, that emulation feature that you can't seem to get on your other videos, right? But the Hansel reached out to me and a bunch of other content creators to test out their plugin. And without further ado, let's get to it. So as you can see, I have one of the clips from the video. This is a part of the city of Montevideo. I'm gonna start by going to the effects and searching for the plug in the Hansa. Oh, one more thing here. After you store the Hansa, you would also have to install the profiles of the cameras you're trying to emulate. When you start Premiere Pro, make sure you click the Alt button as well as the icon. This will bring a pop-up and you would have to select the Reset Cache option. If you do not do this, you may not see the options of the cameras you need in the plugin. Before we get started, I'm actually going to add a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer is where we're going to put the plugin. Enhancer right here. And we'll just apply it right here. This sucks. <laughs> As the procrastinator I am, I failed to do this within the month. So the watermark is still here. But I still get a chance to use it. And I'm going to show you what it looks like regardless. Please ignore the watermark. The first setting of the Hansa is the input. I shot this in S-Log3. I have the option for the source to actually choose the camera, which I shot it on, and it was the A7 IV, and it automatically kind of changes it. Once we've chosen the camera, we can check the exposure composition. When I shot this clip, I overexposed it a little bit, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change the exposure comp to minus one, and for the temperature, I want that summary feel. So I'm going to make this about 35. I'll just show you this, but the tint composition obviously changes the tint slightly of the video. Uh, I like it just how it is. So I'm just going to leave it as zero. The defrage polishes lines. So I don't want to do that for this. Later on, I'll put a setting that makes the video look a little more 3D. The next part is the film developer, and I am slightly going to change the contrast. This too, I'm going to make 35. And what that should do is boost the darker areas just a little bit. I do not touch the gamma correction or the color separation, but for color boost, what I will do is I want the colors to pop a little bit more. So I will make this 50. And as you can see, this looks beautiful already. This color, the yellow warmth, the popping in the greens on the trees. Oh, it's, it's amazing already, but there's a lot more we can do. Moving on to the film, this is where you actually get the profiles of the cameras you want to use. The default is going to be Kodak Vision 3 250D. This is great for videos that were taken in the daytime, but I actually like the profile for tungsten. And I don't know if you guys know, but once you see a D next to the name of a camera, it usually does well for daylight. And when you see a T, it's for tungsten, good for night shots. Even though this was taken in daytime, I like to go with the 500T because it gives an interesting color, which I think set the mood for the video. And this is it. So for film compression, this setting is used when you want to flatten the highlights. As you can see, it's a little light here. I want to flatten that a little bit. So I won't touch these settings, but I will enable it. And you can see the difference once I do. Like so. The expand feature just expands the white or dark areas. And I want to just expand the white a little bit. So what I will do is change this from 100 to 90. 
and you can see the sky up here lights up just a little bit. The print defines the final product and what it will look like at the end. On here, I really like the touch of the tonal contrast. What this would do is give a more three-dimensional look to the footage. If I were to bring this up a little bit, see how dark it gets. So this is an at zero. And it just makes it pop a little more. And at 20, I like that. I'm going to keep it that way and it looks great already. Now, color head is for color correction. I am not going to do that for this video, but maybe in another video, you can see how I go about actually correcting my colors. Now for a great feature with the Hansa, the film grain. The lower you go, the bigger the grain. So right now it's at 35 millimeters. If I were to push it to 16 or eight, so that you can see the extremes, you'll see that the grain does become a bit more and faces just end up getting a bit more blurry. Uh, for this, I think I will just keep it at the 35. So what it was before with the ISO of 250. The next two settings are ones that people will love the hands for, and it's the halation and blue. Halation gives that dreamy vintage vibe for lights and it's perfect for nice scenes as you can see this is not a nice scene the bloom effect gives also this glow effect for a softer scene but for me if i were to put this on it would cancel out the 3d effect of the print setting so i'll leave that disabled too film damage creates scratches on the video so the lower the millimeter the more scratches there are so if i were to enable this you would notice as I go through, there are these scratches that show up here. And you can see another one right here. The next one is veneer. If you wanted to darken the outskirts of the video, you can do that. I don't really touch this one as much. Like I said, I don't want it too, too crazed up, but I think I leave this at zero, negative 0 0.4 and we are good. Film breath is an interesting one. Imagine watching a video and for every frame, a setting on the video changes. It goes from a darker tone to a lighter tone to murky or clear, or the brightness somehow changes. It almost gives the illusion that the film is breathing. I personally don't like using it. It just kind of makes like a flicker and it doesn't really give much of what I want. So I will leave this one disabled also. Gateweave is also an interesting one. It kind of reminds me of putting a warp stabilizer on a clip on Premiere Pro. It does the opposite of stabilizing the video and makes it wiggle. I don't really use it either, but if you feel the need to use it in yours, feel free to. The monitor settings used to view hard exposure levels of color and I'm not a colorist, so I may need a bit more education before I personally use it. And then also check if there's any clipping that shows on this video. So using this right now, it looks like the tonal contrast is a bit too much. So what I'm actually going to do is go and break it down a little bit. Let's say by 10. There we go. Nice. And finally, the output session just allows you to control how much of the dehancer you want on your clip. And this is the final results. You can see the before and now the after. But just a couple of quick thoughts of the hands up. I think it's amazing with film emulation is pretty accurate. I am able to go in at the cinematic and vintage look I want for my videos. And I also loved how relatively simple it was to integrate into Premiere Pro. I would have said cost as a con, but they have now brought the price to 199 for a lifetime. And if you're asking me if 200 is worth it for this type of plugin, yes, I would say so. One setting I would actually love to see the Hansa add to the plugin is a film stock plugin. With that, you'd be able to pick the specific decade or century and have various film and cinematic looks from that time or era. This is 199 at the moment. Maybe what you can do is sign up for a trial or buy the product using the code in the description to get a 10% discount. Additionally, I will create the settings on here into a lot, which you can get free of charge in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't usually make tutorials like this, but if you enjoyed it, let me know. Please subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one.